infer what you might have to do as a reader tomorrow based on our learning goal. We will examine the meaning, message, craft, and structure in a poem to prepare for our midterm assessment. If you had to guess, knowing we don't have school Friday, what might you have to do as a reader tomorrow, Valeria? We're going to kind of study today. I don't think this is an assessment you can really study for, but you're on the right track. So what might you expect to get tomorrow? Jayla. <laughs> what might you expect to get tomorrow? Okay. Have to do tomorrow. Okay. We will examine the meaning, message, craft, and structure in a poem. That's a lot. We're looking at the whole poem. To prepare for our midterm assessment, what might you be doing tomorrow, Maria? The assessment, if you had to guess, knowing how assessments work in this class, that it's usually in the form of a reading response. Okay, everybody should have a copy of the text, yeah. What, did everyone get one? Okay. What genre might you expect to see and have to respond to independently tomorrow? Somebody besides Julian. No. A poem. Okay, great inferring. Yes. Tomorrow you will get an unseen text, meaning a poem that you've never read before, or if you've read it, we have not read it together in this class. You can assume, based on what we're studying, that what might be some of the elements of that poem? What might the poet be talking about in the poem? If you had to guess. His culture or her culture, okay? Depending on the gender of the poet. Great. So we're going to practice today with this text, bilingual, okay? Uh, Julian, choose somebody to read the success criteria, please. Dakota. Great. I can critically read and annotate a poem and discuss its meaning and structure with others. On this poem, there are two supportive questions. Somebody read those for me. So we can kind of set up what we might be reading for this first time. Ulysses, what does it say at the bottom of the poem in my hand? What do you notice? And? And? Great. So we're looking for big idea, big meaning here, okay? We're going to read this poem three times. So we're going to practice with this one for our midterm tomorrow. So first I'm going to have you guys talk as a group. Based on the title, what does it, and based on your understanding of this word, we've already talked about language in this quarter, what does it mean to be bilingual? And what are you thinking, please don't peek, what are you thinking about this text just based on the title and your understanding of the word bilingual? Talk in your small groups first. One minute, go. <laughs> You got it. And what tells you it's two languages and not more than one? Oh, uh huh. Okay. 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 Uh, what does Andrea? What does it mean to be bilingual? When you speak more than one language, can you be even more specific? How many languages does a bilingual speaker know? DJ. Two. Two, and what was the clue that it was two and more than one? Because I could be multilingual. I could speak more than two. Why does bilingual tell you two? That prefix by, we just talked about being very helpful. A bicycle has two, how many wheels? Two. Okay. <laughs> Great. So that is helpful. This is somebody who speaks two languages. Raise your hand if you are bilingual. We have some people that, that means you know two languages. Excellent. Okay. Now, to varying degrees, might be, yes. And um, some of us, there's a new, I think some of us, if we're taking American Sign Language, that's a language, right? It's not a language we speak, right? So that would be a different uh, interpretation of bilingual. Cool. Based on what we know about what it means to be bilingual, what are you thinking about? Um, we talked about what it means to be bilingual. So what are you thinking about today's text, which is titled Bilingual? And it's okay now to sort of look at the text, don't read it. But just what do you notice on the page? What stands out for you, Valeria? Oh, well, I have to Go ahead. What's your preview tell you? Um, right here is the hero family. 
ah, we see some Spanish in this text, okay? So this poem might be written in two languages. Kathy, what did you notice? Awesome. So there's some parentheses around words that might be in another language. Emily, what do you notice? Nice participation, you guys. Okay, so you're noticing a pattern. This poet is writing in a more strict pattern than we've seen. Great noticing. Jayla, what do you notice? Well, like I was talking to Micah and Kathy about this, and I thought it was in Spanish, but then Micah was pointing out after bilingual that it looked like it was German, so maybe more than one language. Okay, maybe more than one language. What what took you off to German, Micah? Because it had like the two dots. Oh, that punctuation mark. So you've seen that in the German language. Okay. Those of you, I'm going to go over to this group. Guys, what language are you thinking? First time. We're going to read this two times. And because I only speak one language, I'm going to tell you how I'm going to read it. First, I'm going to read it as the author wrote it. I'm going to do my best to try to read what the author, what the poet wrote, knowing that I don't speak Spanish and this is going to be a challenge for me. Okay? Stephen, during the independent times. Thank you. Text out, get ready to go. Okay? I'm fine with snacks, but we do that during the pen time. Thank you. Um, then I'm going to reread it, and I'm going to just read the English because I think that might help me make meaning. Okay? Then I'm going to read it a third time and see if I can draw some conclusions about this text. Okay? So your job as I read this this first time is to annotate what you're noticing. And you guys already noticed a lot. You noticed the structure, you're thinking about the title, you see the two languages, Kathy saw punctuation of parentheses, is that important? Okay, you mark and I read. Eyes on your text, pencil out, let's go. Bilingual, and I'm going to ask for help right now. How would you say bilingual in Spanish? Eric, how do you say Bilingual. Bilingual, thank you. Okay, ready? Here we go. I will read it slow so you can catch up. My father liked them separate. One there, half in fear of words he loved, but wanted not to hear. DJ's hand is up. Go ahead. You see rhyming. Did anybody else hear some rhyming in there? Okay, I'm thinking that might help me understand this. So I'm going to do it one more time, a little bit faster this time. And I'm going to ignore the Spanish so that I can focus on what I do understand, which is the English, and maybe help me make meaning. But if you speak Spanish, and the Spanish is helping you make meaning, you read that part in your head. Kathy. I don't like rhyming. You know what? I don't like rhyming. Where? Do you want to point one out? It's rhyming at the end of every sentence. OK, so we have some end line rhyme scheme going on. See if you can hear it a little bit louder once I um, drop the Spanish out. Okay. My father liked them separate, one there, one here, as if aware that of words he loved, but wanted not to hear. That helped me, <laughs> because I wasn't stumbling over words that I really don't know how to pronounce. Talk in your groups, what do you think this poem means so far? Let's get some impressions. What do we think this poem means? And then we're going to do some translating work and see if we can go a little deeper. Nene, what do you think? Um, I think Nene, it really not help me uh, that anything, how um, she, her dad doesn't want her to speak the language. Hold on to your thought. <laughs> Nene, I'm going to push this group, Nene and Emily, a little bit more. You think the father doesn't want who? So we know there's a father and daughter in this poem to speak English. English. Interesting. Is there, what in the text tells you that? In the end, it said, uh, half the fear of the words he loved but wanted not to hear. What does that make you think? I mean, it probably means like, it means something that um, he loved those words, but he didn't like hearing them. 
And what are you doing as a reader, Emily Nene? Since it doesn't actually tell us in the text, what? you're doing what? You're, you're doing some inferring. So the inference is the father doesn't want the daughter to speak English. Interesting. Anybody agree or disagree with that? Yeah. Stephen. Disagree. Disagree. What do you think? Because I think uh, that the father wants his daughter to speak uh, Spanish. Inside the store of Spanish inside. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got really excited by that. That's my one of my favorite parts of this poem. Where did what stanza did you see that? Um, it's in stanza four. Okay. What does that mean to you, see the English outside this door, Spanish inside? Uh, to me, it means that uh, you can speak English outside this household, but you can't. Uh, you don't, they don't like it when it's inside. Okay. When it's inside, you should speak Spanish. Great. Why not? That's a big question I have. Why not? I consider bilingual a, being bilingual a great strength. Why not? Why not, Andrea? Because maybe that's her first language and the dad doesn't want her to forget it. Why not, Jonathan? Oh. Okay. I think I'm going to put this at the bottom, just some of our children, some of our children. So our big question is why? Okay. Noah, what do you think? Um, I think the father said that in college and English outside is because their culture is very strict. Maybe. Okay. What makes you think that? Because he keeps on trying to mention, okay, um, don't speak Spanish. Okay. The fact that he would say that makes you think he's strict? Yeah. So maybe the culture, or just this father. Translate, would you please do this on your own copy? Let's see if we can dig a little deeper once we know the Spanish. Bilingual. My father liked them separate. One there, one here. Aya y aquí, in parentheses. Uh, Andrea, what does aya y aquí mean? There and here. There and here. So, what would you say this poet is doing in this stanza? Repeating. But it's addressing everything in this one, repeating. But in a different language. This is not a kind of repetition we've seen from a poet. So, do we need to really understand what's in parentheses right here? No, because they do have it for us in English. Awesome. Let's see if this pattern plays out the whole time. Okay? So everybody should write here and there and here. Is that right? Yeah. There and here. I get me a key. If you don't know what that means. What Stephen, am I interrupting you? Stephen, am I, am I interrupting you? Okay, there and here. Okay, I hear a side conversation over there. It's distracting. Um, as if aware that words might cut into his daughter's heart. El corazón. Maria, what does it mean? The heart. So, what is the poet doing there? Do we need to know what that means to understand? Okay. And now it's making me think something about this punctuation. Why is the poet using parentheses? What might that punctuation tell us, or how might that help us? Go ahead, Jordan. Well, it's saying that it's saying that it's kind of like it reminds me of the title bilingual. Okay. It's mentioning the same words in different languages. Kind of like the person who's reading it, it's kind of like if they don't understand, then maybe. But why parentheses, Jordan? So my question is, why parentheses? Because it's like the same thing that. Okay. So what we know about parentheses is sometimes we get additional information, but sometimes we just get information that it's just extra and we already know it if we leave it out. Jonathan, 